uh, the Irish at this time. He's kind of this is his first year there. He's kind of uh, uh, got a lot of freshmen. They're really talented, but they're not proven. Uh, and that's one advantage that we're going to have is we're a bigger yeah. team. We've got a lot more experience. But Marcus Burton will be a handful for both of our guards tonight. The other thing that Coach Pearl sort of harped on after the last game and then on his Monday pre or his Tuesday press conference as well, and that is second half defense. He was, uh, you know, he was very intent on pointing out the fact that Auburn had given up way too many points, over 90 points combined in the second half of games. As a former coach, how do you combat that? How do you coach defense differently in the second half? Well, I think it's a good problem to have early in the year. It's always a concern for coaches when uh, you give up a lot of points in the second half. And really, that's one of my uh, the first keys to the game tonight, uh, Paul, is establishing our tempo, number one, with our pressure defense, especially without fouling. And we have yet to get to that point. We will get there. And I think that, that will get us off to a good start. It will give Aiden a little bit more comfort level turn into some transition uh, offense and make it a little bit more fun to start with instead of being possession oriented. And so I think guard play is always important. They're the, they start your offense, they're the quarterback of the offense, but they also uh, headline uh, the first start of your defense and that impacts. And I think that shows our age a little bit the last couple of games. Quick 20 seconds, you can't let this go by without taking a look at what should be a mismatch in Auburn's favor, and that is Jani Broom at the, the four or, or five position. Well, I've said this a lot the last week or so. We are a unique team that is very in a positive way. We have two five men that have, have experienced, they're big, they're physical, and Jani is a double-double guy. I mean, he's got like 85 you know, uh, double figure games. He's got 48 double doubles. I mean, he's a proven, certainly a, a, an all SEC preseason first teamer. And then, you know, Dylan Cardwell is a proven backup guy, brings a lot of emotion. He's fun to watch and he will rebound the ball and he's got great size. We'll see how it works out. Coach, thank you for your keys. We'll talk to you a little bit later. Stay with us. We're counting down to tip Auburn and Notre Dame. This is the Auburn Sports Network from Playfly. Download the new and improved Auburn Game Day app. It's fully customizable to your interests with the new My Auburn tab. Plus, buy tickets, skip concession lines, be a part of game day giveaways, shop the latest Auburn gear, and get live in-game scoring. Plus, listen to every broadcast from the Auburn Sports Network, even when multiple games are happening simultaneously on the official mobile app of Auburn Athletics. The Auburn Game Day app. Download it now. Damaging an underground utility can cause a lot more problems than you think. By causing a potentially avoidable damage to underground utilities, there's many scenarios that do not end well. To keep the gas, power, water, and internet running, using 811 to have your underground utilities marked is a critical piece of the damage prevention process, whether you're a homeowner or an excavator. It's free, it's simple, and it's the law. Visit AL811.com for more information. When you see the SEC student athlete, it's easy to picture the swing, the stance, the form, but look closer and you see the heart, the brain, the clutch lab partner, the avid two-stepper, the pride of a hometown and a little brother's hero. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. CBNS Bank has a long history of stability and a legacy of serving our community's needs for Quinn, generations. you got the new lineup you file. You say we know a thing or two about the Yes, sir. That's the one you said earlier, right? Yep. And financially yep. Thank strong you. Since we began in 1906. Being a team player is part of our culture. That's why at CBNS Bank, we are proud supporters and huge fans of Auburn basketball. Whoa, Regal. Hey, visit CBSBank.com today. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. We're counting down to the opening tip. Time to introduce the starting five. Holloway crossover dribble. Once a screen from Cardwell uses it. Down the lane, to the hole, up in. 
Top of the circle. Holloway, three. Switch! Great yes. ball movement. Aiden Holloway, Charlotte, North Carolina. Pro with the press. Off the left side. Denver Jones, three. Yes! All right. Just kicks it to the corner. Three ball. Denver, yeah. good! Oh, well played. Denver Jones, Newmark, Alabama, Boca High School. Free throw line, Jalen. Head fake up with the raw left hand. Yes. yes. Good skin right. pass, Jalen. Open three ball. Switch. Jalen Williams, May Hunter, Georgia, Brantley County High School. Rebound, Moore goes up and scores. Chris Moore with the foot. Don't right. look underneath. Moore with the two hands. Underneath for Chris Moore. Up with a right hand. Yes. Chris Moore, West Memphis, Arkansas. Academies of West Memphis. Head fake and three by Broom. He chances a left hand hammer by Janai against Left Robert. wing Broom. Three ball, Janai. It's oh, Downtown oh, ball underneath. Trent. Blocked by Broom. Yes. Blocked again by Broom. Janai Broom, Grand City, Florida, Tampa County. The starting lineups have been presented by Great Southern Wood, makers of yellow wood brand pressure treated pine. If it doesn't have that yellow tag, you don't want it. Lights are on at the Barclays Center. Starting lineups have just been announced. Lineups for Notre Dame. The point guard is Marcus Burton, a sensational freshman out of Mishawaka, Indiana. Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana. 23 points per game and four rebounds per contest for Notre Dame. The two guard is the coach's son, Braden Shrewsbury, 6'3 freshman out of State College, Pennsylvania. Of course, his dad, Micah Shrewsbury, was the head coach at Penn State for two years. He was uh, he scored seven points in the opener, held scoreless against Western Carolina. Joining Burton and Shrewsbury in the backcourt, it is Julian Roper the second out of Detroit, a 6'4 junior, 10.5 points and six rebounds per game. The forwards, Tay Davis, a 6'9 sophomore out of Indianapolis, a transfer from Seton Hall. He has 10 total points, nine total rebounds through the first two games. And Matt Zona, 6'9, a senior out of Blauvelt, New York, three and a half points, four and a half rebounds per contest. So again for Auburn, Holloway, Jones, Moore, Williams, Broom. And for Notre Dame, it's Burton, Shrewsbury, Roper, Davis, and Zona. The officials tonight, Matt Potter, A.J. Desai, and Pat Evans. Auburn will be wearing the orange jerseys with blue numerals, white trim, white letters on the back, blue letters, white trim on the front, power stripe down the side of those orange jerseys. Notre Dame will be in their home white jerseys with white shorts, the ND insignia on the side of the shorts, navy blue letters and numerals, and gold trim. All right, Coach Dickey, let's have some fun here at the Legends Classic. Well, it's going to be an exciting evening. I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how the first five minutes goes. I think the strength, the experience of the Tigers should prevail right off the bat, kind of breaking the Irish spirit, so to speak, establishing the tempo, and then finishing it out in the second half. But we're going to see what's going to happen. I think we'll go inside early. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm a little bit of concern to the um, the Irish big. He steps out, he shoots threes. He's, you know, he's really a good scorer. That may be a little bit, we may be a little vulnerable to some things there, but it's going to be fun to see. Auburn wants to establish the tempo. They want to dictate the pace of this game from the very beginning. I mean, literally the opening tip of this ball game. They want to be the more physical team, and they don't want a lot of play stoppages in this game tonight. I think the faster you we can play, the better our team is going to be throughout the season. And it starts here tonight, and it's going to be fun to watch Aiden kind of driving that uh, bus, so to speak. Zona will jump for Notre Dame. Janai Broom skips up to the center court line. Tell you what, there's an awful lot of orange and blue in here for the talk of the Notre Dame home court advantage, and they have a lot of fans in New York. There's a whole lot of Auburn represented here, plenty of witnesses. It's Auburn, it's Notre Dame. Players take their positions, ball in the air, we are underway. Donaldson controls and Auburn will run the half court offense right out of the start here. Here's Broom, one on one against Zona. Left hand off the window, won't go. Battle for the offensive board, Broom has it. Turn around, back up and in, Janai Broom. An offensive rebound and a stick back to start things here in Brooklyn. Puts uh, the Tigers in their press, adding a little pressure up the court. Jogging it in the front court is Burton, and oh man, is he good. Tigers have seen a handful of talented freshman point guards 
to start the season. They've got one of their own. Driving, kicking, Davis into the corner. Shrewsbury tries to drive on Holloway, spin in the lane, kicks it back out to the wing to Davis. One-on-one -on -one against Broom. Head fake, up with the left hand, off the glass. It's good. Left side, Tate Davis with the bucket, and we're tied at two inside the first 45 seconds. I think you're going to see the Irish try to isolate Janai out on the perimeter and look to drive him up. They opened up the middle, and it was a tough coverage there. Oh, your station ID will get that here at the next stop. 2-2 our score. We played less than a minute. Holloway rocks the dribble, goes left, side of the lane, off the glass, soft layup, won't go, rebound, Broom put back, good, and a foul. Two offensive rebounds and putbacks for Janai Broom. You said it'd be an advantage for Auburn. It has been as we pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Auburn Sports Network. Janai Broom goes to the free throw line. He is 9 of 13 at the stripe so far this year. He was 56% a season ago, left that one a little bit short. So it's 4-2 Auburn. Quickly into front court, this is Roper. Hands it off to Zona at the top, the five man at the top of the key to Davis, just right at the top. Two dribbles, now he picks it up, hands to Shrewsbury in the corner. To the right see a wing. lot of handoffs. A lot of ball screens by the Irish. Ten on the shot clock for Notre Dame. Zona's trapped. He hands off to Burton. Burton guarded by Chris Moore. Four to shoot. Burton's going to have to drive. He pulls up, puts it up against Broom. High off the window. It just rolled out. Halfway down, and it's slow rolled out. Out of bounds. Last touch by Moore. Notre Dame keeps it with a brand new shot clock. I think that's an adjustment that the Tigers are going to have to make is try to keep Broom away from Burton because he certainly drew, drove him up then. Entry comes to Zonu, hands to Roper along the perimeter. He looks back to his head coach to reset the play. 13 on the shot clock. 4-2, Auburn our score. We played a little over a minute and a half. Zona picks up the dribble. Tigers pressure defensively, looking for help. Gets to Roper. Cuts right side of the lane, backs it out, doesn't look at the shot clock, runs out of time. Terrific defense, and the bench just explodes. They're behind the Tigers on a terrific defensive stop. Really set the tone right there. In the first three possessions, we got a 30-second you know, count, got the ball back. That was a really big feather in our cap. 4-2 Auburn, Tigers lead, and they have the ball. Holloway gets a screen from Broom, doesn't use it, bounces to Broom. Underneath, left block, he put it in. All six of Auburn's points have come from Broom, and all from about the same spot on the floor. Aiden did a great job reading the defense, drawing them together, driving into the paint, and laying it off to Broom for the finish. Top of the key, Shrewsbury pops a three, won't go, missed it left, rebound Zona, offensive board in the second try for Notre Dame. This Another is Burton. mismatch. Burton against Broom, one-on-one, -on -one, dribbles down the baseline, now comes back, kicks into the corner, Shrewsbury, back to Burton. Seven to shoot, fires a long three from the wing, won't go, rebound Broom, and they will call a foul on the floor, I think on Holloway, for undercutting Tay Davis. Holloway trying to box out Davis, and the officials say that uh, he was not in position and undercut him. Davis was so much bigger, we couldn't even see Aiden. Yeah. I guess he got underneath him and kind of tried to box him out, but it was certainly a mismatch of weight there. First foul of the game, 17-33 to go in the half. KD Johnson, Chad Baker-Mazzara in for Auburn. 18 on the shot clock. This is Roper on the left wing, gets to Burton between the circles. Hands off Shrewsbury to the top in zona, left wing to Davis. He'll fire a three, or rather Burton missed it, and the long rebound comes to Chaney Johnson, who also checked in at that last stoppage. He had it knocked away, but KD recovers in front of the sideline on the other side, in front of the fans in the expensive seats. Front row here at the Barclays Center. We approach 17 minutes in the half. Holloway pull up, long three, got it. Oh, he knocked down a triple from the right wing. And it's nine to two, Tigers. That was quite an acrobatic shot. It looked like he got hit on in, as he was in the air and still went ahead and made it. Nine two, Tigers have scored seven straight points. Shrewsbury hounded there by Holloway. To Zona at the top, looks right wing, back to Shrewsbury. A three over Broom. Broom may have gotten a hand on it, partially deflected it. It was way short. Rebound KD. Front court bounce to Broom, left side of the key. He'll go one on one against Zona. Now drop back, little fadeaway is good, and Janai Broom shakes his head. He says they can't guard me. It's 11 to two. So far they haven't been able to. Eight points for Janai. Played great defense in, got in transition, got Broom posted up. 
let him do his thing there. Burton drives all the way to the hoop, up and under move. Reverse won't go in among the tall trees. It comes to Davis. Took a bounce off of a couple of Tigers to Tay Davis right underneath the bucket, and he dropped it in. 11-4, snaps a 9-0 Auburn run. 11-4 Tigers, 15-55 on a counting first half clock. Holloway against Burton. Pulls up, goes to Broom at the top. He'll try a three. Nope, missed it to the right. And the rebound to Notre Dame. It comes to Davis. I think that, he just felt that. It was, yeah. uh, he had his uh, shot there, and he's made some threes from that spot he just that, missed. That was a heat check for Janai. That one from too far out. Here's Zona for three in the left corner. Bricked it off Let's the side of the backboard. Now. Holloway, one on three. He'll pull it up. Pull it up at the timeline and give it to Johnson. Bruce Pearl yells to reset. 15-20, first half. 11-4, Auburn on top. Right wing, Baker Mazzara gets away from his man. A little floater, count it, and a foul. Right elbow, Chad Baker Mazzara knocks down his first shot of the ball game. He had 12 minutes in the opener against Baylor, 23 last time against Southeastern Louisiana. And he knocks down his first shot of the game here. Timeout on the floor. Really, really good, good start. Yes, really good two-man play. Good screen by Broom. Mazzara took the ball hard to the basket. They did not cover him. He made a nice floater, and he got fouled. Timeout on the floor. Baker Mazzara shoots the plus one when we come back. 13-4 to four Tigers, 15-16 to go in the first half in Brooklyn. Auburn basketball continues in a moment. When the game goes into overtime. But... The game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, y'all, this is Ronte. And a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich is the pimento cheese. I was like, go cheese, go pimento, go honey, go get it. Hi, this is Shantrice, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Honey Pepper Pimento Chicken Sandwich is the mild spiciness of the pickled jalapenos. No, it's the crispy chicken. Actually, I can't decide. It's the entire sandwich. Order the Honey Pepper Pimento Chicken Sandwich on the Chick-fil-A app today. Available for a limited time. Real Chick-fil-A guests paid for their testimonials. War Eagle, it's a great day for Auburn Tigers to get vaccinated. Many children and adults that delayed vaccinations during the pandemic are still behind schedule. It's crucial that we take steps to get everyone back on track with their routine immunizations. Children and teens can still catch up on their vaccinations, even if they start late. Make sure you and your family are all up to date on all recommended vaccines, including COVID-19 and flu. Let's all do our part to get back on track. Don't wait. Vaccinate. For more information, visit alabamapublichealth.gov forward slash IMM. Chick-fil-A is proud to present this broadcast of Auburn basketball. All Chick-fil-A locations in Alabama proudly support the Auburn Tigers. Eat more chicken and war eagle with Chick-fil-A. 13-4 Auburn, less than five minutes into the contest. And uh, Randall Dickey, you said before that Janai Broom would be a matchup problem for Notre Dame. He has been. Auburn has gone to the big man. He's getting a rest right now coming out of the timeout, but he has been almost unstoppable. Well, I think that's a good way for us to start every night is let him, he is our catalyst and certainly our, our, our big five man. He's one of our leading scorers. He's a double-double machine. Yeah. Getting him off to a good start is always going to be important. Chad baker Mazzara at the line hit a little mid-range floater from the right elbow before the break and was fouled. So he goes to the line to try to complete the three-point play. He's eight of nine at the free throw line so far this season and now make it 9 of 10 as he does complete the three-point play. And it gives Auburn a 10-point lead at 14 to 4. Gives this second unit a chance to establish themselves if they can maintain the intensity defensively. Burton goes to the right wing to Roper, back to Burton. Burton 0 for 3 from the floor in the first segment of the game. Kicks into the corner to Davis. Davis drives and walks. K.D. Johnson right on top of him like a fur coat here in New York. Really good defensive stance by Cheney Johnson. Great help by KD. 
Let's see if we can get us a good basket. We'll probably run a set here and probably dictate what, where the shot's going to come from. Dylan Cardwell, Trey Donaldson into the game for the first time out of that timeout. Baker Mazar at the top gets a screen. Cardwell instead goes left. Tries to go to Cardwell, flashing down the lane. It's off his fingertips. Turnover Auburn. Notre Dame picking up the pace a little bit. They don't do that much. They did in transition. Auburn recovered. Burton to the right wing. Davis. Davis hands off to Imes. Now back to the top in Booth. Imes back up point guard. Playing the two guard with Burton in the game. One hands a pass into the corner, but it's knocked away by KD. Notre Dame keeps it with 11 to shoot. And Notre Dame brings J.R. Konezny into the ball game. Konezny out of South Bend. 6'7", sophomore guard. Notre Dame going to its bench. They don't have a deep bench or haven't so far this year. And they're going to them early. The Tigers are applying so much pressure. They're extending a lot of energy right now. They're having to go to their bench. To the left wing. Drive by Konezny. Nope, ran out of time on the drive to the bucket. He only had 11 to shoot at the beginning of the possession. And for the second time in the first six minutes, Auburn forces a shot clock violation. That's a really big plus for us. Shows our defense is really getting better. Donaldson runs point for the Tigers. Approaching 14 minutes in the first half. 14-4. Goes to KD, left wing, drive in the lane, leans, puts it up, hangs, missed it a little bit short, and the rebound to Notre Dame. Imes drew it out of there. Imes on the bounce, down the lane, circles back on the dribble. Looks to reset. Goes to Booth. To the right wing, Burton, head fake, drive, steps through, put it up, couldn't get the reverse to go. Baker Mazzara gets the rebound, and then he is fouled. Good defensive rebound by Mazzari, had great position. Went and retrieved the ball off the glass. Tried to get it started in our transition, but then he ended up getting fouled. Imes picked up the foul, his first. Last two possessions, Brad, we shot, we shot the ball, but we should have passed, and the one before that, we should have shot it instead mm -hmm. of passing. Jalen Williams looks back door, Baker Mazzara, nope, whistle, and Dylan Cardwell with an illegal screen away from the ball. So Cardwell picks up his first. Once again, the play was there on the back side. They had Baker Mazzara open underneath, but. I think any time that you run into Cardwell, it would look like he would foul because yeah. he's so big and strong, but he looked like he had position. It was just unfortunate. KD working against Imes, who picked up his dribble, goes to Roper at the right timeline. Roper on a left-handed bounce, yo-yo dribble. Now crosses over, down the lane, head fake, Baker Mazzara got him past him and put it in. So a nice play by Julian Roper to get his first bucket. First player other than Tay Davis to score. 14 to six, Auburn's lead is eight. 13.05, moving clock here in the first half. Moore and Jones in at the next dead ball. Bounce pass looking for Cardwell, and Dillon goes down. They called it out of, out of bounds off of Auburn, back to Notre Dame. And Dillon hobbled a little bit as he comes back this way. That's three three possessions. We've had two missed shots. Yeah. And then we turned it over right then. And all three looked like it was there. It just did not come to fruition. Yeah. And on two of those, there, there was a dedicated effort to try to get Dillon the Certainly ball. They're trying to expose the, the size mismatch inside. Just had one too many thumbs on that one. Yeah. Here's Imes, a bounce pass to Shrewsbury. Had a screen at it, knocked away from him. Picked out of there by Cardwell to Donaldson. Three, right wing Trey. Yes, sir. Trey Donaldson with the three. Great decision by Dylan Cardwell on the fast break, leading the fast break, and made it got an assist out of it. Back to a double-digit lead for Auburn, 17 to 6, 12 and a half to go first half. Imes hunches over on the bounce, goes to Shrewsbury, back to Imes. Auburn switches. He's working against Cardwell. Now backs it out. 12 to shoot into the corner to Roper. Perimeter game for Notre Dame to be sure right now. They can't get anything on the paint. The Unless Tigers continue to really pressure the basketball. Long three, Roper with one of the shot clock. He bricked it. It did not hit the rim. That is a third shot clock violation. They cannot work the ball into the paint. Coach Dickey, Auburn's perimeter defense is doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of there. And, and you see that the, they're taking marginal shots because of that, because the shot clock's about to get them again, and they have to force up a, a shot. So it's a big kudos to us. We need to just keep this up, keep pressuring the ball, and extend this lead. Break at the next dead ball, 17-6 Tigers as we go under 12 minutes in the first half. Donaldson. Goes to the right corner and Moore. Wants to go into Williams, it's not there. Back to Trey, backs it out near the center line. With 10 to shoot. 
Donaldson now, oh, crossover and a beauty. Pull up, jumper, left elbow, got it. Oh, that was pretty. Gorgeous play, nice crossover dribble, kept his head up. Nice little jump shot from the 15-foot mark. 19 to six, Tigers in control early here in Brooklyn. This is Booth, hands off to Davis against Jones. Davis, one bounce to Shrewsbury. He'll drive into the lane, put it up with the right hand, wild shot, wouldn't go. Backside offensive board and put back by Koneski. And Koneski gets his first two. It's 19 to eight, Auburn. The two times we've let the ball get to the paint, they've scored on us or even we fouled. Here's Donaldson. He's knocked down a couple of jumpers since entering the game. Into the left corner, Jalen Williams. 4-3, count it, Jalen Williams. Great assist by Trey Donaldson. Drove the ball hard, got the ball deep. The defense collapsed and he found Williams on the perimeter. 22 to eight, Auburn. Three different players have knocked down a three here in the early going. 10.45 to go first half. Davis drives left side of the lane, spins on Cardwell, put it up, high off the glass. Tough shot for Tay Davis. He thought he got fouled. Six points for Davis. It was really defended well. He just made a really good shot out of it. Williams, head fake at three, picks it up. Right side wing to Moore, back to Donaldson. Looks back to Coach Pearl, play is called. Donaldson, crossover, backs it out to Williams, left of the top. Back to Trey, right wing, longer three. This one rims out. And Looked the rebound. Had a good shot, defensive transition, got the ball stopped, very good. Long three, Booth, no good. Rebound, Auburn, great box outs all around there. It was Williams who cleared it to Denver Jones, to Donaldson left, inside to Cardwell. Power dribble spin at it, knocked away. Shrewsbury with the steal. Four on two, Notre Dame, and Donaldson commits a foul, reaching in on Shrewsbury with 9.54 to go in the first half. We have just our second stoppage in play in this ball game. A timeout is on the floor. First half is presented by Southern Union, conveniently located only a few miles from Auburn. Southern Union offers classes that easily transfer to the university. Endless opportunities are right up the road. 9.54 to go in half number one. Auburn 22, Notre Dame 10. From the Legends Classic at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, this is the Auburn Sports Network from Playfly. When Auburn football hits the half, keep it locked on the Auburn Sports Network for the Truck Works Halftime right. Report. Does Paul want to take Paul it here? Paul takes the driver's seat and delivers stats, scores, highlights, and analysis from the first Hey, did you want minutes. him to uh, update some updates? Field sure. With head coach okay. Hugh Freeze, he said, yeah, well, go ahead. Getting ready for the rest of the game. The Truck All right, Works He's, he's going to come in with a few scores. On the Auburn Sports Network. The game has changed, and the future of Auburn athletics now demands a strong NIL program. I'm Jason Campbell. Let's come together, Auburn family, and make a lasting impact. Visit ontovictory.com. Every dollar you contribute to On to Victory helps create NIL opportunities for our student athletes. Visit www.ontovictory.com and be a part of changing the game for Auburn athletics. Don't you mean fa la 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 la? Nope, we're shaking things up. Whatever you say. Shake things up this season at the Toyota Don sales event. Lease a new 2024 Toyota. Thanks to everybody watching on YouTube. Months for 24 months. We know it's a hot mic. We won't say anything. Dash. Toyota, let's go places. Offer valid through December 5th, 2023. Five, five seconds coming in with scoreboard. Beautiful. Finance, 36, 38, do it signing, no security deposit. With select equipment, free 50 disposition fee. Excludes tax, tag, registration, title, and dealer fees. See dealer for details. <laughs> Allen back in the studio checking the Yellowwood scoreboard. Future Auburn opponent, Indiana, held on late. Beat interstate rival Wright State, 89 to 80. Winner of this game will be playing St. Bonaventure tomorrow night. They beat Oklahoma State, 66-64. A real shootout in the Park Place Center. A couple of state scores that might be of interest. UAB after trailing early, leading Alcorn State, 56-48. Middle of the second half. Also, Here South Alabama, 48-35 over Here we go. We're ready. 15 minutes to go. Now back to Brad at the Barclays Center. All right, Paul, thank you very much. It's 22-10, Auburn. Burton with the ball for Notre Dame out of the timeout. Marcus Burton looking for his first points 
of the game. He's averaging 23 per contest coming in. Goes to Shrewsbury on the right wing, drives on Jones. One-handed floater in the lane is good. Shrewsbury was held without a field goal in Notre Dame's loss to Western Carolina. Went three for seven against Niagara, 0 for seven against Western Carolina, and gets his first bucket there. By re reputation, he's you know one of the top 10 players out of the state of Pennsylvania this year. Ball was. Can really score. Auburn had a ball deflected on the other end, almost went in. Notre Dame back the other way. 22-12, Auburn on top as uh, we approach nine minutes in the half. Right wing, Konezny, wide open shot from the wing, won't go. Backside rebound, Jalen for Auburn. Here's Holloway to Williams, Beautiful. flying in. Missed it a little too strong, but it's stolen by Denver Great Jones, who players. hangs and scores on the low post. Denver Jones with a steal and a layup on the other end after a wild miss by Williams where he was just a little bit off balance. From a terrific pass from Aiden yeah. Holloway. And great awareness by Denver picking that ball up and putting it back in. 24-12, Tigers, 8.35 to go in the first half. This is Burton to the top, and Zono's back into Shrewsbury. Drives, gets a screen, put it up, too strong. Konezny had the rebound, lost it. Rebound to Auburn. Moore clears it to Holloway, top of the key. Aiden drives on Konezny, spins, lobs it back out to Moore. Back to Holloway, right wing, drives to the baseline, into the corner, Jones, touch pass, Williams, head fake, three ball on the way, no, missed it. Left side, tapped up, Notre Dame with a rebound. It's Zona who controls it for the Irish. Aiden Holloway's everywhere. He was even tipping on that uh, rebound then. Burton works against Holloway. A couple of freshmen going at it. He drives, put it up, scored off the window, right side. Good body lean there for Marcus Burton, and the freshman gets his first bucket, 24-14 Auburn. We may need to readjust our defense just a little bit. They're 0 for 8 from the three-point line. We're pressuring that really well. Denver lobs inside to Broom, a power dribble, and then he slipped, and that was after he stepped on the baseline. And so that's an unforced error, and Notre Dame gets it back after a timeout on the floor. 7.33 to go here in the first half. Great things are possible when you have the power, performance, and smart features of a Ford F-150, the official truck of the Auburn Tigers. Greatness starts at your local Ford dealer. Tigers on top by 10 here in Brooklyn. Auburn basketball continues in a moment. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, Brad. please welcome our host. Yes, sir. Can we turn his mic up a little bit? Yes. Okay. The moment to show that hard Coach, can you make sure your microphone is just as close? Yeah, closer to your mouth. Okay. Yeah. That'll be good. And we leave our seats. Thanks for uh, staying on that, Quinn. No problem. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of the Auburn Tigers. Power for a better Alabama. With Busy's vibrant dual flavors, the vibe is yours to decide. I'm thinking Busy refreshingly berry. A round of blackberry lemon at the bar? Could be good. Maybe Busy vibrantly tropical. You always say vibrantly tropical. Come on, a cooler full of papaya passion fruit on the beach? Oh, yeah, that's a vibe. I'm down. Busy Hard Seltzer. Flavor for everybody. Naturally flavored with other natural flavors. Celebrate responsibly. 2023 Molson Coors Beverage Company. Milwaukee, Wisconsin flavor beer. You say poor eagles instead of hello? See tigers in the clouds? Never wear crimson and white together? That's so, there's no better way to show your tiger pride than with the Auburn University Regents Visa Debit Card and eBay Regents Now Card. As passionate as you are about Auburn, Regents is even more passionate about celebrating your every financial win and helping you plan for the next one. To order your cards, visit regents.com slash go tigers. Regents, official bank of the SEC, member FDIC, terms, conditions, and fees apply. Exclusive pregame coverage of the Tigers begins uh, now with the CBNS Bank countdown nope. to tip off. Coming up. Come out analysis. of this. This is wrong. All right, we're back. we're back in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center. Thanks for being with us tonight alongside Coach Randall Dickey. I'm Brad Law, Quim Burkeen in our Skyview Auburn Sports Network studios. Hope you enjoyed Tiger Talk earlier tonight. Andy Bertram, Coach Hugh Freeze, John Cohen, Jay Fair. Uh, who else was on the show tonight? Brent Crouch was on the show. Getting you ready for Auburn football this weekend and Auburn volleyball with three straight matches to close out the regular season. If you missed that, uh, subscribe to the Talking Tigers podcast and uh, you'll be alerted when the show is ready to go in podcast form. That'll come your way tomorrow.
can also watch the archive on YouTube if you're watching us tonight that way. Either way, we appreciate you tuning in. Glad you're making us a part of your night. The winner of this game will meet St. Bonaventure tomorrow at 6 Central. The loser gets Oklahoma State at 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. Auburn leads here with 7.30 to go in the first half, 24 to 14. KD Johnson, Chaney Johnson back into the lineup for the Tigers. Notre Dame with possession coming out. This is Zona, top of the key against Broom. He's got Janai way out on the perimeter. Hands off to Konezny. Over his head, he goes to Zona, had it knocked away by Janai. 10 to shoot. Zona spins, gives to Burton. Into the corner it goes, Davis. He's open for a three, missed it long. Konezny with the rebound and the putback though. That's just hustle play by J.R. Konezny. He has four points and right now, Randall, Notre Dame is winning on the glass. The game has changed just a little bit. We're, they are not shooting the ball very well from the three point line and we're still pressuring. But what they are is they're getting the ball deep in the inside. Chris Moore Big knocks shot. down a three from the right wing. They left him open and he took it. So Notre Dame is winning the rebounding battle, but Auburn's up double digits on the scoreboard, 27-16 with 6.35 to go here in the first half. Burton crosses over, pushes the pass into the corner to Konezny, drives, kicks back to Burton. He'll take the three, missed it long. He is really frustrated offensively. Ball is on the floor. Davis had it, gives it to Burton, who drives, and had it blocked, but a foul is called. Chaney Johnson got the block, but they'll say Chaney got him with the body first. That's, That's true. the first foul on Johnson. They changed their offensive set, Brad. After that timeout, they went to a handoff with a ball screen, which has created drives. It's made our defense kind of drop in, and it's given up a couple of perimeter shots. But what's happened is second opportunities is hurting us right now. Marcus Burton goes to the line. He is a perfect 10 for 10 at the free throw line this season. He had 29 points against Niagara in their season opener and he missed the first free throw. How about that, his first miss of the year. 29 points against Niagara, the most ever for a Notre Dame freshman in his debut. Yeah, came into the game 10 for 10 from the line. Yeah. Hmm. He's having to work really hard because of the Auburn defensive pressure. He got the second one to go, front of the rim, back of the rim, and in. Three points for Burton, and the Auburn lead is 10, 27-17. 6-15, first half, KD crossover, three. No, but he's fouled by Burton, and KD goes to the line to shoot three free throws. First foul on Burton. And the fourth whistled against the Irish I think KD here in the was first a half. Fortunate thing. Yeah. Took a marginal shot, but... He is really tough. He kind of knew what he was doing. Get to the free throw line. Three free throws for KD. The first one is good. He is now four for four at the line this year. Auburn basketball brought to you in part by Auburn Opelika Tourism. Start your next visit to the Plains at aotourism.com. KD's second free throw is good. That's 29-17. By the way, Keontae Scott was the other player that was on Tiger Talk tonight just because we like to be thorough and accurate. Chris Moore checks out, Chad Baker-Mazzara back in. So it's Baker-Mazzara, Chaney Johnson, KD, Holloway, and Cardwell for the Tigers. KD trying to get the Tigers to 30. His third free throw, he left it a little bit short. First miss of the year for KD, 29-17 Auburn. Notre Dame with the ball. Burton with a crossover, all the way in, tough shot, won't go. Tapped up, no, follow jam by Davis. Another Tate Davis. Opportunity. We've got to box out and retrieve the ball off the defensive glass. Davis with an athletic move, KD head fake at three, now takes a contested three, might have been partially blocked there by Imes, who flew in to recover defensively, and now Notre Dame has it with a chance to take the Auburn lead down under double figures. Burton, oh, Dillon lost a shoe. Cardwell lost a shoe, it went flying into the seats, and now Chaney Johnson bodies up Davis on the baseline, and there's a foul. That's the second on Chaney, the junior from Alabaster. I think we've kind of relaxed our shoulders a little bit. Our intensity is not where it was early in the first seven or eight minutes of the game. We've got to get that back, but the biggest thing is we've got to give them one shot and retrieve the ball off the defensive glass. <laughs> Dylan just having a seat, tying his shoe over there, and now he's ready. He's a crowd favorite in both the Big <laughs> Apple as well as in uh, Auburn uh, oh, Tiger country. They loved him in Times Square the other day. 
Working against a five count, Imes, long pass. And it's retrieved in backcourt by Booth, ahead to Burton. Backs it out, 14 to shoot. Auburn's forced three shot clock violations so far in the first half. Davis with 10, drives against Johnson. He's double teamed by KD and Chaney. KD ripped the ball away, and then he's fouled by Davis. Tay Davis reached in a frustration foul after KD and Chaney Johnson double teamed him in the corner, and then KD ripped the ball away. I think any time the ball's on the floor, my money would be on KD Johnson to retrieve it back because he is really tough and not afraid to put his nose in there and grab a hold of it. 521 to go. And now they're going to go to the monitor here and review the play to see whether or not this was a flagrant foul on the part of Tay Davis. So the replay monitor, they, they'll do this right in front of us. It's a two-tiered or a two-row press area. And uh, we are the road directly behind the replay review that's taking place now. We were a little bit blocked from, from exactly what happened on the play. We just saw Chaney and KD double team Davis in what is the near right corner as we look at it. It looked like to me that two guys were really scrambling for the ball and, and there was a big size difference. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he just kind of bucked yeah. him out of bounds, but uh, the monitor should tell us the truth on that, and the bench had us blocked. Auburn is shooting 58% from the floor, and they've cooled off. They've cooled down to 58%. Notre Dame, meanwhile, shooting 36% for the game. Auburn 11 of 19, Notre Dame 9 of 25. Tigers are being out-rebounded 16 to 9. And a lot of those points for Notre Dame have come off second chance opportunities, and almost all of their points, if not all of their points, have come in the paint. Yeah, the guards are driving it in, putting up marginal shots. We're not getting the defensive rebound, and they're crashing the glass, getting stick backs, and we've got to get that under control. Because that's the, the thing that that leads to, Brad, is it leads to foul trouble. Eventually, yeah. you'll get, as the game goes on, if they continue to crash the glass, we'll eventually end up fouling, and we don't want to do that. Well, the leading scorer for Notre Dame, Tay Davis, who has eight of their 19 points, that's his second foul, to your point. So he has to sit down for a little while. They don't want to risk him getting his third with five minutes or so to go in the first half. We'll probably run a special play right here, right out of the timeout. Holloway. Off the foot of Baker Mazzara, picked up by KD on the left wing. KD got to the right spot. Drives, baseline, picks it up, bounces to Chaney underneath. Cardwell, oh, what a strong jam. Dylan Cardwell off the feed from Chaney Johnson for the jam, 31-19. Great team play. Four players touched that ball, and, and Cardwell finished it off with a great dunk. Goodness gracious, it was contested and he didn't care. And now he just blocks a shot hard off the backboard. It's off of a Notre Dame player and out of bounds. Cardwell doing it on one end of the floor and on the other. That's the thing that he is one of the better backup five men in the country. He brings energy, he brings great effort, and he is big and can block shots. Couple of block shots for the Tigers here in the first half. Broom has one, and now Cardwell has one. 31-19, 444 to go in the first half. Baker Mazzara, top of the key, stops his drive, now goes again, picks it up. Left side of the lane, knocked away, gets it back to KD, he'll shoot a three and miss it to the left. Rebound on the floor to Shrewsbury for Notre Dame. He falls down, and then the ball is loose. It's a rugby scrum, bodies on the floor. It's a tie-up, a jump ball, possession arrow to Notre Dame with 424 to go in the first half. Man, about six guys hit the deck hard after that loose ball. Great effort by both teams. They really were scrambled right after that ball, and it was really important, and that shows their intensity. Notre Dame possession, trailing Auburn 31-19, 4.24 to go here in the first half. It's Imes at the point for the Irish. Gets a screen from Booth, KD fights through it to Shrewsbury, now to Booth. Hands off to Shrewsbury, top of the key. Lobs it right side, Roper. Can't go right side, it's not cut off. Back to Himes at the top. Good job defending that handoff ball screen action. Hand off to Roper, three to shoot. He drives, knocks down KD Johnson. That's an offensive foul. Shot clock was winding down. Coach, I don't know if they get the shot off without the offensive foul, but with it, it's definitely a, a, a momentum shift. It's such a great feeling for your team that 
reading through the scouting report, they went over that uh, handoff ball screen action, and when you perform it well and then draw the charge, that's, that's even better. So Roper commits the offensive foul. Here's Holloway to the right side, Baker Mazzara back to Aiden at the top, pops a three, hits good, leaning into the three just left of the top of the key, and it's the second triple of the ball game for Aiden Holloway. Great utilization of the ball screen by Aiden. Got just enough space to get his shot off and made a beautiful shot out of it. 34-19 Auburn, here is Booth, hands off Shrewsbury. Three and a half minutes to go in the half. To the top, Booth fires the three, it's no good, off the heel. Rebound in front of the Auburn bench to KD, to Holloway. Auburn wants to run, KD left wing, crossover, drives, puts it up off the glass, no. Shrewsbury the running rebound for Notre Dame. It's two on three, Shrewsbury one on one, puts it up, off the window, no, and they'll count the basket. They'll say that an Auburn player pulled the rim uh, when the ball was coming down off the glass, and so it's a bucket for Notre Dame, 34-21. Auburn leads it, Janai Broom and Denver Jones and Trey Donaldson will all check in and so will Jalen Williams. It's a wholesale shift for Auburn coming out of the timeout. 3.15 to go, first half, Auburn 34, Notre Dame 21 for the Barclays Center in Brooklyn and the Legends Classic. This is the Auburn Sports Network from Playfly. Presenting the all-new Aubie's Kids Club. Benefits include an exclusive Aubie-branded swag box or bag, T-shirt, membership card, access to exclusive Kids Club events, as well as free admission to non-conference baseball, softball, and women's basketball games. Members also get a monthly newsletter from Aubie, a special invitation to Aubie's birthday party, and a personalized birthday card. Two membership options are available. Learn more and register at aubieskidsclub.com. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Mmm, <sighs> best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. We got a game to call. With summer in our rear view, it's time to focus on the best time of the year. And we don't mean football season. Gear up for ample bounties of farm fresh goodness raised by some of the best folks in Alabama. If you thought summer was the only time you could score tasty treats, think again. Fall is ripe for the picking. Literally, from juicy, straight from the orchard apples and pecans to straight from the hive, honey. Fall brings out some incredible flavors. Find apples, pecans, honey, and more near you at Sweet Grown Alabama. Stay tuned for the Koneka Sausage Halftime Report, which is coming your way in three minutes and 15 seconds of game action. Paul Ellen is in our Auburn Sports Network studios. He'll run through scores from college basketball and take a look around Auburn athletics, plus the numbers from the first 20 minutes. Auburn got out to a fast start, and uh, they have not. I don't know, Coach, if they've let up off the gas, they've still been able to maintain this double-digit lead that they've enjoyed for most of the first half. It's 34-21 right now. I think we've regained our, the speed of the tempo offensively, and I think Aiden has been a big part of that. But between he and Trey, our two point guards have 11 points, four rebounds in about 17 minutes. It's great stats in that one position. No question about it. And Janai Broom has been a mismatch on the inside. And Janai's back in there after the break. Baker Mazzara, right wing. And there's a pass from Baker Mazzara, stolen by Burton, one on one against Donaldson. Takes it up, left it short, rebound Kaneski, and the putback is good. J.R. Kaneski has three offensive rebound and putbacks for Notre Dame, and the Auburn lead is 11, 34-23. I think Chad will get better at that. He was a little lazy on his pass and let Baker run through the ball. Baker Mazzara, right wing, bounce pass to Broom, right elbow, couple of dribbles, bodies up Zona, puts it up with the left hand, no good. Rebound underneath to Notre Dame. This is Burton, who circles back to slow it down. They do not run a whole lot. They want to play a half-court game, and they don't mind taking the shot clock down low. Zona, top of the key against Broom, hands off to Shrewsbury, gets a screen, pops a three left of the top, it's good. Micah Shrewsbury, or Brayton Shrewsbury, rather, with the triple. We Micah Shrewsbury. Break down then. We went under the screen instead of chasing over the top, which freed him up, and that was their first three of the night, I think. 
Yeah, Shrewsbury with the first three. That's a good pickup, Coach, for Notre Dame tonight. Braden Shrewsbury. It also has changed the tempo a little bit, mm -hmm. and we have uh, had a hard time sustaining that. We have substituted a great deal with different combinations. That's going to pay off in the long run, but early in the year, it's hard to sustain your level of what I would call the magic level of intensity throughout the entire half. So Coach Pearl is testing our players right now. He's challenging them defensively. He's challenging them on how fast they play offensive. And then let's see what happens in the next two minutes and 17 seconds, because the Irish have made a game out of this. Yeah, and that we know about the emphasis on the team coming out in the second half defensively and having it look like it looks at the beginning of games. Well, I think it'll pay off the last seven minutes of the game. You're playing a lot of people early, yeah. you, know, you know, and then all of a sudden you settle into one unit in that last three or four or five minutes of the game. Two minutes, 17 seconds to go in the half. Tigers lead is down to eight, 34-26. Notre Dame is just steadily Crept up to 38% shooting, Auburn at 54%. And 25 of Notre Dame's 26 points have come in the paint. Beautiful play. A little give and go and a bump on the right side of the lane. Zona is whistled for the foul. He got his body into Chris Moore. Good set play call by the, the Tigers out of a timeout. That's the seventh team foul on Notre Dame, so Moore goes to the line to shoot one and one. Chris Moore, 50% field goal shooter for his Auburn career. This is his first trip to the foul line this season, and, well, you couldn't tell it. I tell you, he's been a mainstay. He's just a great communicator on the floor. He's a good defensive player. He does the little things that makes our team better. Second free throws. He tries to complete the one in bonus. Nope. Off the back side of the rim and then off the lip. So the rebound to Notre Dame. Auburn leads by nine. And we go under two minutes to go here in the first half. Burton bounces to Zona at the top. Cardwell right there on top of him. A couple of left-handed dribbles, and he hands back to Burton. Drives in the lane. Pull-up jumper. Good. That's his shot. That's his specialty. You can and just tell by the expression on his face. He's a little more serious. He's kind of yeah. settled into the game, and he's playing better. That's five for Burton. The Auburn lead is seven, 34-28. Cardwell hands off, Holloway lobs it up there, won't go, rebound. First a whistle and a foul on the floor. And this one looks like it'll go against Notre Dame. It's Burton who has whistled for the grab, and that is two on Marcus Burton. Yeah, that's big, the last one, 34. It'll be an interesting coaching move of whether they leave him in the game, yeah. whether they switch it in and out, offense, defense, substitution right. Moore good on the first free throw. Another one and bonus opportunity for Chris. This is really big. Scoring when the clock is not moving is always a positive. This to take the lead back to nine. He got it. Chris Moore, three of four at the stripe. He has six points, and Auburn leads at 37-28 with 90 seconds to go in the half. Burton working against KD. It's a good matchup, putting KD on him. Sure is. Shrewsbury right wing, he'll pop another three and nail it. This communication there, Shrewsbury floated open. He's going to feel it. He's got a couple threes in the bag. Coach's son has the green light anywhere on the floor. He's knocked down a couple of threes. 37-31, the Auburn lead is six. Holloway had it knocked away from behind. Battle for it on the floor. Notre Dame has it. This goes into the hands of Roper. Two possession game with 53 seconds to go in the half. Burton had it knocked away from him by Cardwell. Oh, they'll say it's off of Auburn. And Notre Dame will keep it with 22 seconds to go. The Auburn bench certainly didn't think so. Yeah, we're letting the ball get a little bit deep on us in the defensive end. Burton's speed has picked up in the last three minutes. 30 second timeout called by Notre Dame with 49 and 8 tenths seconds to go in the first half, 37-31. Notre Dame is now shooting 42% from the field. They missed their first 11 threes, but Shrewsbury has hit two in a row, and they continue to have a big advantage on the glass. 
Now we don't need to poke that bear because he's got a beautiful jump shot, a great wrist on him, and he is reputation-wise, but he is a first-year college player, and so he's just starting to get settled in, so we don't want to let him get, go off on us. Have you noticed anything they're doing defensively, Coach, that has kept Auburn from being I think, able to work the ball through the inside offensively? I think one thing that we've done, we've kind of gotten away from the high ball screen to free up Aiden on the drive to create a shot for other players. The second thing is I think that our switching defense, the Irish have done a very good job adjusting to that and creating mismatches to getting the ball deep in the paint. Notre Dame ball out of the timeout, 49 and 8, 10 seconds left. Burton triggers for the Irish. He gets it ahead to Roper. Back between the circles to Burton. 45 seconds in the half. Burton, crossover dribble against Moore. 10 to shoot, 38 on the game clock. He drives against Moore, puts it up, high off the glass, won't go. Rebound Chaney Johnson. Here's Holloway in front court. They push it quickly and now slow it down. Yeah, I think we'll go. I think we'll hold it to the last shot. We couldn't. We can't go for the two for one yep. on this possession. So we might as well run the shot clock all the way down and then take the shot. Three second differential driving. Cheney Johnson nice. left handed in the lane. It's good off the glass. Beautiful left hand layup. The Irish went to zone and we just picked it apart. Ten Tigers have scored here in the first half. Burton a pull up jumper. They just left him. They just went away from him. They were switching defensively and left Burton wide open for a shot. He hit it as we go to halftime. Notre Dame has to feel really good about itself after surviving the early onslaught. Auburn led by as many as 13 in that first half. It is a six point game here at the half. Uh, Coach, your thoughts on that first 20 minutes? I felt like it was. we were terrific. The first 12 minutes of the game, we just dominated. Our energy level was really good. We were making the extra pass and also finishing the plays. The last seven or eight minutes of the game, we quit defensive rebounding. We let the ball get deep on us on the offensive end, created some plays, gave the Irish some confidence, and it also created Shrewsbury floating open and Burton is kind of playing a little bit harder, a little bit smarter, trying to create those mismatches to drive our bigs up. We've got to make some adjustments in the halftime, come out second half and reestablish ourselves. All right, the clock here at the Barclays Center says 14 and a half minutes. That's, uh, that's how far away we are from second half action. 39-33, Auburn on top at the break. Sounds like a great time to turn things over to Paul Ellen and the Auburn Sports Network Studios for the Koneka Sausage Halftime Report. All right, Brad, thank you very much. Let's check the Yellowwood scoreboard to get things started here at halftime. Missouri, the only other SEC team playing now. They fell way behind at Minnesota. Missouri with a rally late. And Minnesota leading at halftime, 38-32 in that game. A couple of games involving state of Alabama teams, UAB, and Alcorn State playing in Birmingham. UAB had a big lead. They now lead by only four. 6.30 to go in that game. UAB leads it 68 to 64. South Alabama also in the second half late, and they lead Nichols by a score of 55-51. So a lot of tough games, a lot of tight games around the country as a lot of uh, holiday tournaments uh, going on. Well, the winner tonight will face St. Bonaventure at the Barclays Center tomorrow late afternoon. Uh, St. Bonaventure shot a lot of free throws down the stretch and beat Oklahoma State 66-64. to One ranked team in action today. That was number six Houston. They beat Towson State 65-49. to Upcoming Auburn opponent Indiana hung on against their intrastate rival Wright State 89-80. to That game has just gone final as well. We'll take a look around the Auburn University campus a little bit later on. We'll have your halftime statistics as Auburn led by as many as 14, but the margin at halftime, just six points, 39-33. Auburn leads Notre Dame at half. This is the Auburn Sports Network from Playfly. Hey, Tiger fans. Be sure to join Coach Jay in Auburn women's basketball this season in Neville Arena. Limited reserve seating options for season tickets are on sale now. The package includes home games against Tennessee, LSU, Alabama, and South Carolina. For more information or to purchase season tickets, visit aubtix.com. 
Thank you for supporting Auburn women's basketball. And see you this season in Neville Arena. War Eagle. When the game goes into overtime. But... The game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our home. When you step onto the court and into the spotlight. The moment to show that hard work and long days pay off. Because when that final shot leaves your hands and we leave our seats, that powerful moment connects us all. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of the Auburn Tigers. Power for a better Alabama. Hey there, Bob Baumhauer here. Baumhauer's Victory Grill is your big game headquarters all fall long. And with our new fall features, every day is game day at Baumhauer's Victory Grill. Try our pregame starters, including our homemade onion strings, always fresh hot lips, and our all-new buffalo dip and chicken appetizer. Our main events include incredible chicken, fish, and shrimp selections, always featuring local Alabama Gulf seafood. And don't forget our Sunday Blitz, 11 to 6. Baumhauer's Victory Grill, legendary fun, legendary food. And welcome back. Auburn leading Notre Dame 39-33. Tigers got out to as much as a 14-point lead. Notre Dame, though, dominated the boards in a big fashion and used some offensive rebounds to make it close at halftime. 39-33, a six-point margin for Auburn. Time for the Auburn Athletics Report as we look around the campus. Big football weekend, obviously. Auburn against New Mexico State. Three o'clock kick. And that one at Jordan Hare Stadium on Saturday. Auburn freshman center Savannah Scott has been named SEC Freshman of the Week for women's basketball. Scott, a 6'4 freshman from Conway, Arkansas, had a memorable first week as a college player. She leads the SEC in field goal percentage. She's 10th in scoring at 16.7 and 11th in rebounding at 8.3. She leads Auburn in all of those categories. Her first career road game was a double-double against Rutgers earlier in the week. Well, eyeing to make a splash before the calendar year ends, Auburn swimming and diving, competing in the UGA Fall Invitational in Athens, Georgia. That got underway today. It'll continue for a couple of more days. Intercollegiate Tennis Association released its final individual rankings of the fall yesterday. Three Tigers are ranked in singles. Senior Carolyn Ansari earned the highest singles ranking of her career Wednesday. She came in at eighth. She was 22nd in the preseason. Sophomore DJ Bennett had the highest ranking of her career as well at 30th. And Celan Ovank also broke into the singles rankings, coming in at 122 in the nation. We'll check your halftime numbers when we come back. Auburn leading 39 to 33. The Kaneka Sausage Halftime Report continues in a moment. Kaneka Sausage is a fan favorite for tailgating, always great on the grill, and it's the official sausage dog and hot dog of the Auburn Tigers. Kaneka Sausage is made from the finest cuts of pork, their patented blend of seasonings, and smoked over a pure hickory fire for that true southern flavor. Be sure to visit the Kaneka Gift Shop in Evergreen, Alabama, right off I-65 at exit 96. Enjoy a crowd-pleasing Kaneka Sausage Dog while watching the Tigers and make Kaneka part of your game day. Kaneka Sausage, since 1947, a real winner. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our home. When you step onto the court and into the spotlight, the moment to show that hard work and long days pay off. Because when that final shot leaves your hands and we leave our seats, that powerful moment connects us all. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of the Auburn Tigers. Power for a better Alabama. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must try for... Aw, Jim. <sighs> Ha <laughs> ha best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. We're still on the air. 
Hello, this is Coach Hugh Freeze. They say Coke Zero sugar is irresistibly tasty. Does that make it the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. War Eagle. Take it from me, basketball season is a grind. That's why it's great to get away and recharge in my Ford F-150 truck. With available pro power on board, which lets me use F-150 as a mobile generator, I can enjoy the great outdoors while watching games and highlights on my flat screen TV. Ah, relaxation. Check out the official truck of the Auburn Tigers at your local Ford dealer and tell them Bruce Pearl sent you. See owner's manual for important operating instructions. Some models, trims, and features may not be available and may be subject to change. Half-court offense right out of the start here. Here's Broom, one-on-one against Zona. Left hand off the window, won't go. Battle for the offensive board. Broom has it. Turn around, back up and in. Janai Broom, an offensive rebound and a stick back to start things here in Broom. And that was the way Auburn started. Janai Broom with a very hot start. Time for your halftime numbers brought to you by the Alabama Department of Public Health. Don't wait. Vaccinate. Protect yourself and others by staying current on all recommended vaccines. Visit alabamapublichealth.gov slash IMM. Auburn got off to a hot start. Tigers shot the ball well. Notre Dame with a surge in the final minutes to make it close. Auburn for the half shot 54% on 14 for 26. They were 50% from three-point range at 5 for 10, 67% from the line at 6 out of 9. Notre Dame wound up shooting 43% after a horrible start. They were 15 for 35, so they got nine more shots than Auburn. That's indicative of the rebounding margin. From three-point range, Notre Dame two for 13, 15%, shot only two free throws. They were one for two. But on the boards, Notre Dame with 21 rebounds to just 13 for Auburn. Uh, defensively, they had 12 to 10 for Auburn, but on the offensive boards, the Irish cleaned up nine offensive rebounds to just three for the Tigers, and they dominated second chance points by virtue of that nine to three. Auburn got more bench points, 14 to six, but points in the paint, Notre Dame 24 to 14, a 10 point margin there. Auburn with seven assists to four for the Fighting Irish, but the Irish had five steals to just three for the Tigers. Tigers blocked three shots to one for Notre Dame. Leading score for Auburn, Janai Broom, eight points, but only two rebounds for the big guy. Trey Donaldson had five points. Uh, Chris Moore and Aiden Holloway with six, point each, six points each for the Tigers. Shrewsbury. On a two for fourth from three point range, had 10 points to lead all scores as he led Notre Dame. Marcus Burton with seven points for the Fighting Irish. But as we said, the Irish dominating on the boards. And as a result, uh, they made it close. Auburn by 14 at one point. They cut it to six. And uh, we've reached halftime in a very close up in the air game. Once again, your score at halftime Auburn 39, Notre Dame 33. You've been listening to the Koneka Sausage Halftime Show. Make Koneka Sausage part of your game day. Still family-owned and made in Evergreen, Alabama since 1947. The second half is two minutes away. This is the Auburn Sports Network. Seasons Federal Credit Union is offering a seven-month CD at an annual percentage yield of 5.64% and a 13-month CD at an annual percentage yield of 5.38%. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union is the financial institution for you. This promotion is for new deposits only with a $2,500 minimum. Membership eligibility required. Accounts are federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Contact us for more details. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for more Morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons we provide do an cutting-edge ID there, surgical we need procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close yeah, to we home. Need ID. Don't let joint or Thank orthopedic you. pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Fine dining meets Southern Comfort at Vintage 2298, Auburn's newest fine dining restaurant and butcher shop. Chef Randall Baldwin and wife Laura present Gulf Cuisine for the Southern and flair made fresh farm to table seasonal meats cheeses wine and handcrafted cocktails available next door at the butcher shop manager stephen jacobs and staff bring a new level of service to local dining at vintage 2298 
private dining and event space available, as well as awesome tailgate packages found in the butcher shop. Experience Vintage 2298. 1907. Auburn had no paved roads, no local newspaper, a few automobiles, very little electricity or indoor plumbing, and one bank, Auburn Bank. For all these years, we've had a part in shaping and serving Auburn, Opelika, and East Alabama, a steadfast partner to our customers, meeting financial needs at just the right times. How do we know our community so well? Because we've grown up together. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Back at the Barclays Center, back at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, alongside Coach Randall Dickey, I'm Brad Law. Thanks to Paul Ellen for the Connecco Sausage Halftime Report. Auburn on top of Notre Dame, 39-33, about a minute and a half away from second half action. Before we dissect a little bit here, Coach, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Auburn Sports Network. Auburn led by as many as 15 points, but it's just a six point lead as we get set to start the second half. What's the biggest thing that needs to change for Auburn in order to hang on to this lead in the second half? I think two things. I think we've got to reestablish our presence defensively, and I think we've got to find Janai Broom a little bit more. We found him early when our defense intensity was high early in the game, and we kind of got away from that. Uh, from a defensive perspective, I mean, there's, you know, they did a really good job on Burton. He was just three for 12 in the first half. You hold that guy to seven points, you feel like you've done a lot of things right. But everybody else went 12 for 23. So everybody outside of Burton, you take his shots away, they shot over 50%. What kind of adjustments do you expect defensively? You know, I'm anxious to see, and I don't know uh, if the Tigers will do this, but I would like to see if that could maybe we trap him yeah. in a double team off all those ball screens. Even though he's done a, you know, a scoring a lot of points and things like that, he is certainly the presence and the catalyst of their team in their offense. Auburn made five threes in the first half, five of 10, 14 of 26 overall. So nine of 16 from inside the three point line. So Auburn shot the ball well itself. Of course, 54% for the half. You know, win a lot of ball games that way, but Something that I'm sure they talked about in the locker room is the uh, the heart and the hustle for rebounds. Well, we I, I didn't expect Notre Dame to win the first half rebounding battle by eight. And they shouldn't. We, we're bigger, we're stronger, we're more experienced, but we're letting the ball get to the paint. 22 of the first 23 points they scored was in the paint. Yeah. So we've got to reestablish it. That is at the Tigers area there and take over that area and make them shoot over the top of us. Auburn ball to start half number two. Holloway, Williams, Broom, Jones, and Moore. Same starting five that uh, at the beginning of the game for the Tigers here to start the second half. Denver Jones drives high off the glass with a runner won't go. Rebound loose on the floor, picked up by Holloway. Pushes it right wing Jones, head fake at three. Back to Aiden, he'll try a three. That's good from the right wing. Aiden Holloway with yes. his third three point bucket of the ball game. That's the way to get us started. Maybe we can get him a few more shots out there as pretty as that looked. Offensive rebound led to that for the Tigers. It's 42-33. Auburn by nine, Burton against Williams. Tries to make him go left, instead he went right, head fake, got it back, shoveled it to Zona, left low post, to the left wing and Shrewsbury, Braden Shrewsbury against Jones. Inside. We're staying with our switching defense as well. Shrewsbury gets it back, pops the three, it is short, rebound, backside to Auburn because Notre Dame committed a foul and that's Tay Davis and Tay Davis who scored eight early points for Notre Dame had to come out after getting his second foul with about eight minutes to go in the half just picked up his third so how long will he stay in there not a minute deep into the second half Denver Jones takes a handoff from Broom, hooks a pass left wing Holloway, inside to Janai, spins left to the baseline into the right corner just off the fingertips of Chris Moore and out of bounds, a turnover to Notre Dame. Tempo was a little bit better. Just unfortunate that Janai got pushed deep underneath the basket and had to pitch it out and just actually went off uh, Chris's fingers. 18.47 to go, clock moves, second half, 42-33 Auburn. Winner gets St. Bonaventure tomorrow at 6 Central. Loser gets Oklahoma State at 3.30. 
Burton keeps his dribble against Holloway, drives left side of the lane, bounces a pass right lane to Zona. It is deflected to the right wing in Davis. Tay Davis with five to shoot. Off the bounce against Jones, pulls up for three. Not the shot they want him to take. He missed it off the heel, and the rebound to Auburn. Broom pulled it in. Right wing Jones underneath for Williams. He was held by Shrewsbury. Braden Shrewsbury gets his first foul, and uh, Auburn established position there on the inside. That's what led to the foul. That's the first time that we really pushed the ball in transition and settled and tried to jam the ball to the block. And that was and drew the foul. That was a good presence. Good job by Aiden in Denver. Williams triggers in to Broom. Just a lob and a touch into the bucket for Janai Broom. He established position, nice touch pass, and a nice finish. Great special play from underneath out of bounds. Broom into double figures. He has 10. He's the first Tiger in double figures. 44-33. The Auburn lead is 11. Zona against Broom and Janai Hacks at him with the left hand, and that's a foul on Janai Broom, his first. Just a little swat at the side. Zona's body was turned away from him, and that's the side that he hacked at. I think Janai knew once that uh, Davis uh, Zona put the ball on the deck that he wasn't very yeah. good with it. There's a whistle and a timeout, or no, that's a five-second call. I thought maybe they got a timeout. Instead, it's a five-second call, and there you see Auburn clamping down defensively. Coaches have to like that with all the emphasis on the early second-half defense. Oh, it's one of the staples that made Coach Pearl so good is because he always pressures the inbounds pass, and we got the five-second call. Top of the key. Chaney Johnson to the left wing, back to Holloway. Quick passing, jumper on the way, it's good, and a foul. It's a three and a foul for Aiden Holloway from the left wing. What a beautiful release on a jump shot. Great presence by Janai, passing up the shot, putting on the deck, setting a screen for Aiden, and Aiden took advantage of that and actually got fouled. All right, they're going to call it a two, but they're going to review to see if it was a two or three. It was close. And it was on the other side of the floor, so we didn't get a good view. But uh, the officials will come over. They will review the play. 47-33 or 46-33. Boy, that shot, Coach, with Aiden leaning in is really tough to defend. And it's a three. Yep. So they give him the three. He's got a chance for a four-point play right here. Stretch his lead out a little bit more. Aiden Holloway with four threes in the ball game. He has a dozen points. His presence has been really impactful this first three minutes yeah. of the game. Second half. Got a great four-point play. The foul was on Marcus Burton. That's equally as important. Mm -hmm. That's three on him. Three on Burton and three on Davis. Auburn's lead is back to 15, 48-33, 17 and a half minutes to go. Here is Booth to the left corner, Davis. Davis dribbles out toward the wing, now crosses back over to the baseline, to the wing, and Burton 10 to shoot. He drives, puts up a right-handed runner against Broom. It's no good. Rebound, Chaney Johnson. Auburn wants to run. Holloway, bounce pass, Broom, right low post. Oh, he is really hit hard on the... Uh, chin or shoulder area, and let's see. They got the foul on Roper. Those great kudos passing by Aiden Holloway. Throwing the ball from midcourt to the deep block with a big guy, Janai Broom, made a sensational play just to catch that. Yeah, that was a clothesline and a beauty. And a foul on a Roper, his second. Auburn ball out of bounds. Bounce pass in it comes in a lot of traffic. Moore digs it out of there and then drops it in. Chris Moore now has eight. Notre Dame calls timeout. Auburn has extended its lead to 50 to 33. Tigers are really good on out of bounds plays and they've shown it a couple of times here this half. It's a great sign for a ball club going out through the year. Early in the year, establish yourself the first five minutes of the second half and the Tigers have actually done that been really good and stretch this lead out. Called timeout, first of the half. That's a full timeout. We'll take it as well. 17-11 to go in the ballgame. Auburn 50, Notre Dame 33. Auburn basketball continues in a moment. 
damaging an underground utility can cause a lot more problems than you think. By causing a potentially avoidable damage to underground utilities, there's many scenarios that do not end well. To keep the gas, power, water, and internet running, using 811 to have your underground utilities marked is a critical piece of the damage prevention process, whether you're a homeowner or an excavator. It's free, it's simple, and it's the law. Visit AL811.com for more information. Tis almost the season. Get head to toe holiday ready at JCPenney. Whether you're in party mode, out and about, or hanging out at home, we've got the style to get your family in the spirit all in one place. Like the dress that makes every guest list or that cute outfit that fits perfectly in Santa's lap. Don't forget the matching PJs, a festive weekend tradition. Your favorite brands are ready to mingle and be merry all season long. Looks that wow, all priced to impress. Make your holidays count. JCPenney. Shop Black Friday every day and get the best new deals all month long, only at Lowe's. Shop the lowest prices of the year on select major appliances. And save an extra $100 for every $800 you spend on select major appliances. Plus, get your home ready for the season with Holiday Living 100-count LED string lights. Was $8.98, now $4.98. Because Lowe's knows deals. Valve to 1122. While supplies last. Selection varies by location. Appliance savings vary based on purchase amount. Exclusions apply. See Lowe's.com for details. Alabama Power is proud to present this broadcast of Auburn basketball. Alabama Power, power for a better Alabama. Back at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Auburn has come out on fire in the second half. 11-0 run for the Tigers to start this second half. Tigers now on top of the Irish, 50 to 33. Second half presented by Wind Creek Hotel and Casino with three Alabama locations in uh, at Moore, Wetumpka, and Montgomery, you can escape every day at Wind Creek Hotel and Casino and online at windcreek.com. The Tigers already have 18 points off turnovers, and that is a season high so far this year. And they're trying to force another one as Cheney Johnson instead is whistled for a foul. They tried to trap the entry pass. That's the first time tonight that we've played what I would call hot on the to trap the first pass. Most of the time we press hard on to try to get the steal, and then we back off and just play a little softer uh, on our press. But that was pretty hot right there. Cheney Johnson has three fouls, and Denver Jones just got hit in the chin. He just got knocked maybe just under the chin. Yeah, I think he pushed him pretty hard to try to create an opening. Julian Roper pushed off right in front of the official. And so that's an offensive foul. Auburn does get it right back. 17.09 to go in the ball game. That's three fouls on Roper. So now Roper, Burton, and Davis all have three. Broom, top of the key. Into the paint, Johnson spins, fades away, hits the Beautiful shot. Beautiful out-of-bounds play, went to our flex cut. Great pass by Janai Broom to Chaney Johnson, and a good finish for the young fella. Balanced scoring continues, four for Johnson. All ten Tigers who have played have scored. Auburn's lead is up to 19, 52-33. Here is Imes against Jones. Imes gets free, drives in the paint, hesitates, looks to the corner, nothing there, bounces into the lane. Spinning is Booth, up and under Booth against Broom. Oh, they called Janai for a foul. Oh, Janai was convinced that he got all ball, but the official says he got him just above the elbow. And two free throws coming up for Kerry Booth. And Janai Broom picks up his second foul. I think it would bailed him out that time, but that was uh, certainly a good play by Janai, but just unfortunate official may have had been blocked out a little bit there. Booth missed the free throw. Booth has been ultra productive for Notre Dame this year. He is five of nine at the free throw line, but he's one of only five freshmen in the country, averaging 15.7 rebounds and shooting 45% from three. That young man's going to be an outstanding player one day. He's got length, he's got size. But he's just a little bit outmatched tonight with Janai. That's his first point of the ball game. Auburn's done a nice job silencing him. Holloway again for three. Missed it a little short. Offensive rebound. Put back. Good for the Tigers. Chris Moore battled for the loose ball. Power dribble and a finish from the left. Went way above the rim to grab that offensive rebound. Chris Moore now with 10 points for the Tigers, who lead it by 20. 54-34 as we approach the 16-minute mark. 
Burton to Imes on the right wing. Back to the top in Booth against Broom. Tries to lob in, nothing there. Instead, he'll hand to Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury backs up inside the jump circle. Now on a left-handed bounce, six to shoot. Right side, Burton against Holloway. Crosses over into the paint, up and under. It's good. And a foul on Broom. I think Broom. It'll be a three-point play opportunity for Burton, who shows why he was Indiana's Mr. Basketball a season ago. We've got timeout on the floor. 15.48 to go. It's Auburn by 18. And Notre Dame shooting free, uh, free throw when we come back. 54-36. Tigers on top. This is the Auburn Sports Network from Playfly. Here's a and when I go speak to different schools, I, and I try to, you know, bring it back right, down. Three on first come in, everybody saw he's an NFL coach this kind of third. So I always thought, y'all yeah, know that classroom at the end of the hall where yeah. the kids that y'all laughed at? That's the classroom that I was in starting off. This half. And, um, and so it, it, it brings a, a level of the, the kids that are in those classrooms or the kids that are struggling in this school. It gives them the opportunity to open up and listen. And but at the same time, you know, I was class president, National Honor Society, won every award at Auburn High School, and it wasn't because I was just a great person, it was because of uh, what my parents did for me. A new episode of the Talking Tigers podcast is released every Monday. Wherever you listen to podcasts, like and subscribe to the Talking Tigers podcast, only from the Auburn Sports Network. Kanaka Sausage is a fan favorite for tailgating, always great on the grill, and it's the official sausage dog and hot dog of the Auburn Tigers. Kanaka Sausage is made from the finest cuts of pork, their patented blend of seasonings, and smoked over a pure hickory fire for that true southern flavor. Be sure to visit the Kanaka Gift Shop in Evergreen, Alabama, right off I-65 at exit 96. Enjoy a crowd-pleasing Kanaka Sausage dog while watching the Tigers and make Kanaka part of your game day. Kanaka Sausage, since 1947, a real winner. Auburn 54, Notre Dame 36, Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Tigers have outscored the Fighting Irish 15 to three so far here in the second half. And Coach Dickey, they have uh, almost evened up the rebounding numbers. Really the only negative in that segment, uh, Brad, was the two fouls, two quick fouls on Janai, which puts him at three. Yeah. So we'll insert Dylan Cardwell to keep it up, but that group really played well. It's going to be interesting now since we've substituted. We've got our second unit in right now. Uh, can they sustain this tempo that yeah. the first unit established? Five rebounds for Auburn in the half, zero for Notre Dame. For every Auburn three-pointer, by the way, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services donates $25 to Coach Pearl's Outlive Cancer Initiative benefits local cancer patients and treatment centers. Three-point play is completed by Marcus Burton, and now he's in double figures with 10. You knew you weren't going to keep him down the whole he's game. He's a really good player. He went to a different level speed-wise the last yeah. couple of minutes. And All right, Cardwell just threw it away. He was looking for KD on the uh, underneath the bucket, but threw it away. Auburn turns it over. This is Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury dribbles all the way down the baseline to the right corner, working against Cardwell, tries to take him on the bounce, spins, picks it up, goes to Burton at the top with 14 to shoot. Burton drives, and he's bodied by Donaldson. They'll get him for a foul, and for Trey Donaldson, that's his second. It's really two negatives right off the bat. We threw the ball away and created a turnover, and he came down and fouled. So we're going to have to pick it up here. It's 15, 19 to go. We've got a great lead. Can't, can't afford to let up we at this point. We don't need to relinquish you? it. Oh, here's Burton. 15 on the shot clock. KD on Burton defensively. Goes to the top in Booth. Booth against Cardwell. Hands off to Shrewsbury. Auburn switches it. Cardwell stays on the floor. Shrewsbury takes a three. No, off the back rim. And the rebound high into the air to get it is Donaldson. Ahead, KD drives. Finger roll to the hoop is good. KD Johnson, that is our SunSouth drive of the game. SunSouth John Deere, the preferred tractor of the Tigers. Find your local dealer at sunsouth.com. Terrific lead pass in the finish. That was only our second basket in transition. Yeah. Here's the drive and the shot. It's good and a foul on Chaney Johnson. Driving all the way in Konesny. 
Kinesny has eight points in the ball game, and the foul on Chaney Johnson is his fourth. He's just out of position there and trying to reach to make up for it to it's no really, avail. So It's really hard to guard that ball. They drive you up without much help in the way the rules have changed. Being able to stay between your man and the basket is even harder as good as the offensive players are in this day and time. Konezny at the line has not attempted a free throw this year. Now he has. He made it. Nine points for Konezny. Konezny had scored just four total points before tonight's game. Going to a zone here. Let's see what we run out of it. Williams threw it off the backboard. Couldn't tell if that was a shot or a pass, quite I frankly. I think it was a pass to Cardwell, but I don't think Dylan could see it. So it's a turnover, and it'll go the other way. It won't be listed as a turnover, and the shot is blocked on the inside. Burton tried to reverse. It was blocked by Williams. Donaldson, right wing, three ball, all rims out. Rebound to Zona of Notre Dame. He covers it up, gets it out to Himes. Now ahead to Burton. To the right wing, Konezny. Konezny hands off, no, fakes a handoff to Imes, drives on the right baseline, knocked away from him by Baker Mazzara. It's loose, picked up into the corner. Burton, open three, left it short. And it kicks backside out to KD Long at midcourt. Johnson to the foul line, lobs to Cardwell, collects it. Power dribble, put it up with the right hand, no, too strong. Battle for the loose ball, it's on the baseline, out of bounds off of Notre Dame and Auburn will keep it. That time the pass inside to Cardwell, just a little too tall for him. He was able to collect it, but not able to finish, and Cardwell comes out, and Janai Broom back into the game with those three fouls. Really made a good effort at it. He's just gotten in a position that he's really not comfortable in. He's sticking that ball back in when it goes all the way from the floor. It's hard for a 6'11 guy to go from the floor all the way to the rim. Shot clock resets to 20. Here's Broom inside, Williams. Got it back, spins in the lane, up with the left hand. Good, Jalen Williams now with five points and the Auburn lead back to 18, 58-40. Now it's good to see Jalen join the party a little bit. That's a nice little jump hook that he is really very consistent at making. Davis bounces it to Zona. Zona hands off to Imes, top of the key. KD right there in his hip pocket. Imes on the bounce to the top. Konezny tries to drive on Donaldson, does, finishes at the rim. No, left it too strong. And the rebound off the front of the rim to Broom. It's a big advantage for the Tigers right now. We got Burton on the bench. It's a good time to go ahead and extend this 18-point lead a little further. Three and double figures for the Tigers. Ten points, four rebounds for Janai. Here's Donaldson left to the top over the right wing, KD. Johnson drives baseline and tries a reverse layup. Some contact there, no whistle. Mm, I think Another. he might have got fouled on that, but it was certainly a marginal yeah. shot. Here's Konezny, head fake on Broom. Drives, another head fake. Janai does not foul. Konezny tried to draw the foul. He did bank it off the glass and in from the right side. Konezny now with 11 points. Another possession of the 2-3 zone. Let's see what the Tigers run against it this time. 58-42, Auburn's lead is 16. Trey Donaldson at the top, pops a three, nails the three. Good entry pass by Mazzara. Got it in deep to Janai Broom and a good kick out to Donaldson and what a beautiful release on his jumper. Second three for Trey. Auburn's made eight in the ball game. Here is Imes to the left wing. Roper, he's open for a three look. It's too strong. Battle for the offensive rebound comes to Konezny and a new shot clock for Notre Dame. Another opportunity. Yeah, we need to stop. We need to get that under control as the season goes along. Konezny spins his pass attempt to the corner, knocked away by KD and out of bounds with 11.36 to go in the game. Notre Dame will keep it when we come back. Find your piece of paradise on the Alabama Gulf Coast with Mindy Jones of Remax Paradise. Visit the website mindyatparadise.com. Tigers 61, Irish 42, 11.36 to go in Brooklyn. Auburn basketball continues in a moment. Hey there, Bob Baumhauer here. Baumhauer's Victory Grill is your big game headquarters all fall long. And with our new fall features, every day is game day at Baumhauer's Victory Grill. Try our pregame starters, including our homemade onion strings, always fresh hot lips, and our all new buffalo dip and chicken hey, appetizers. Brad, do you want scores here? Our main events include incredible yes, chicken, please. fish, and shrimp okay. selection. Yes, sir. Always featuring local Alabama Gulf seafood. And don't forget our Sunday Blitz, 11 to 6. Does our rejoin look well? What's the rejoin coming out Legendary here? Legendary food. Uh, the re 
Rejoinder looks like uh, Cook's You've defensive stats. Right, we can't do scores here. We'll have to do it after the next cash one. Bonus. Oh. For a limited time, All right, no scores here. We have to do it on the next one. $50 in cool cash rebates okay. on a qualified carrier home comfort system. There's never been a better time to upgrade to year-round premium comfort and energy savings. Carrier, a proud partner of Auburn Athletics and special needs assistance stations for you. Turn to the experts with Carrier. Hey, I'm Charles Barkley. Call for a Redmond and water at bars and restaurants throughout the great state of Alabama. Redmond Vodka, available at select ABC stores and package stores. Redmond Vodka is eight times to steal, gluten-free, and is made from non-GMO corn. Looking to support a local business? Redmond Distilling is Alabama proud and minority owned. Learn more online at redmonddistilling.com. A look at the defensive statistics is brought to you by Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. You don't have to live with termites. Marquis Daniels can play a little defense for the Tigers. He's being honored right now on the floor as uh, Auburn's legend here at the Legends Classic. Notre Dame's is LaFonso Ellis this year. And uh, Marquis being recognized, big smile on his face right now as he is celebrated in the massive contingent of Auburn fans here on their feet for Marquise. Auburn defensively, look at those Cook's Pest Control defensive stats. The Tigers have forced 10 turnovers and they've turned those into 20 points. So plus 12 off of turnovers, one of the reasons why the Tigers lead by 19 here. Well, that's true. And we're getting better point guard play as well. Uh, both of that position, we're at 21 points and eight assists. We need to continue to get better there, but uh, it sure is fun to watch Aiden and Trey play. Notre Dame ball out of the timeout, nine on the shot clock. The lob into Zona on the right corner to Burton, guarded by Baker Mazzara, three, two. Has to let it fly from NBA range, and he left it short. And Chad Baker Mazzara with a rebound ahead to Donaldson. It's two on three, Trey. Baker Mazzara back to Donaldson near the jump circle to reset the Auburn offense with 20 to shoot. Good 11, decision. 11-15 to go. Clock runs, second half. Donaldson, right elbow, hooks it left side. Johnson underneath Broom, left low post. Knocked away, but into the hands of Donaldson. All the way, puts it up and in with the left hand. Gorgeous play by Trey Donaldson. Point Good guard. Pass no well. question. And he knew what to do with it once he got the ball. Ten points for Donaldson, so... The Auburn point guards continue their productive night. Auburn by 21. Here's a three, Tay Davis. It's long. Rebound, Broom, his fifth of the game. Ahead to Donaldson. Trey pushes it into front court to Broom. Head fake, drive in the lane, left-hand floater, good. Beautiful running jumper there. Not many big players, 6'10", 6'11", can put the ball on the deck from the top of the key and finish at the rim, and he did. Auburn by 23, 65-42. Broom now with a dozen points and five rebounds. And Davis slipped, and there's a whistle and an Auburn foul as he tried to make his move in the paint. That's KD Johnson, who's guilty of his first foul. They went back to that handoff ball screen opened up the drive. We're still a little shallow on, on defending that. I think we'll get better as the season goes on, but we've got to keep people from getting to the pain on the drive because it does create that. Creates easy shots for the other opposing team and also fouls against us. So that's the seventh team foul against Auburn here in the half. And it puts Davis at the line to shoot one and one. First free throw is perfect. Another thing is, you know, Coach Pearl gets our guys to play so hard and so physical that we do foul a lot, and we'll get better at that as the time goes on. Davis, five of seven at the line this year, make it six of eight as he's good on his two. Now he's in double figures as well with ten. Four Auburn players in double figures, and four for Notre Dame as well. Here's Donaldson. Drives on the baseline to Williams, driving to the hoop for a two-handed jam. Great decision by Trey. Drove it in there, got him a nice assist, and what a sensational dunk by Jalen Williams. Seven for Jalen. He played in both games here four years ago as a freshman, and now Cardwell just ripped the ball away. 
just, just stole it away ahead to KD, and he had it punched out from behind out of bounds. Auburn keeps it with 26 to shoot and a 23-point lead. Gives us a chance to run an underneath out of bounds play. Be interesting to see what we go to right here to try to get a shot. 67, 44, 944 to go. Baker Mazzara bounces to Donaldson. Now to Cardwell at the top to Williams. Right side of the key, no. Just a little too strong in the rebound backside to Davis of Notre Dame. Got a good look, just missed it. Davis against KD. They switch it to Cardwell. And Dillon reaches in, commits the foul. Davis made the bucket. And Tay Davis goes to the line. He'll try to complete a three-point play as Cardwell is guilty of his second foul of the night. Notre Dame has really done a good job making mismatches, putting uh, ball screen actions, which making we're in a switching defense, which puts our bigs on their guards, and that's hard for a guy like Dylan to guard a guy from the three-point line all the way to the basket. Auburn's lead is 21, 67, 46. Davis with 12 points. High rainbow arch on the free throw. It's good. He's got 13. And Auburn's lead is 20. The winner gets St. Bonaventure tomorrow at 6 Central. Baker Mazzara pull up jumper right side. That's no good, but a foul. And Chad will go to the line to shoot a couple after the first foul of the night on J.R. Konezny. Konezny is South Bend native. He's one of four Irish players in double figures. Davis has 13. Konezny has 11. Burton and Shrewsbury have 10 apiece for Auburn. Holloway with 13, Broom with 12, Donaldson and Chris Moore with 10 apiece. It's the sixth double-digit scoring game of Simo's career. Baker Mazzara's two free throws. First is too strong. Looked like he rushed it a little bit. He needs to take his time, take him a big deep breath. It's just his second miss this year. He's 9 of 11. Out of the Dominican Republic, second free throw is true. Recovered nicely then. So both teams with four in double figures, it's been about it's been about the other players scoring. Ten different Tigers have scored, and as a result, they lead by 21. Ball is deflected high in the air, and Donaldson picks it off like a safety. He just ripped it out of the air to Cardwell, right wing. Williams does not take the three. Back out to Donaldson to reset. No need to be in a hurry with nine minutes to go. Donaldson weaves into the lane. Lob, Williams, alley-oop, dunk, Jalen on the finish. Timeout, Notre Dame. Auburn leads by 23, 70 to 47. That was beautiful. That was really nice. Trey Donaldson is the last segment of this game, the last six or seven minutes has really played great. He's fast break. He's found the open person in transition as well as made shots, but his decision-making has been sensational. 30-second timeout. We will keep it here. 8.47 to go in the game. Auburn leads by 23 again. And again, these two point guards, we've talked about it a little bit. Aiden Holloway is four of five from three. He has four assists and just one turnover, 13 points. Trey Donaldson is four of six shooting, five assists, 10 points. So your point guards together have 23 points, nine assists. Well, I think the speed of the game is really affecting the Irish down this stretch right here. I think you can see they're a little bit more winded. They had to take Burton out yeah. and to rest him. When we just continue to add those two combinations, when one gets a little bit of winded, the other one goes in, and it really takes a toll on the opposing team. You want to look at St. Bonaventure. The Bonnies are now 2-1 and one after their win over Oklahoma State. And all three games have been decided by four points or less. They beat Longwood in their season opener, lost to Canisius by three, and then beat Oklahoma State by two in the first game today of the Legends Classic. Here's a bounce pass right wing to Booth. Dribbles around the perimeter, picks up his bounce. It's free, and now will they get KD or Cardwell? They'll get KD on the foul. I think he reached in. I mean, have we seen a guy who's just more consistently tenacious defensively than I'll tell KD? You, I just really wouldn't want him guarding me. No. Kerry Booth to the foul line. His only scoring has been at the line tonight. It's two of three. One and one for Booth out of Inglewood, Colorado. 6'10", freshman. Again, they play about eight guys, and four of them are freshmen. 
And they got another highly rated recruiting class coming in next year as Booth knocks down the second free throw. I think it says a lot that Notre Dame would hire Micah Shrewsbury after just two years as a head coach in college. They really liked his potential. KD, a little bit out of control. They may have bailed him out there. He drew contact, and he'll go to the line to shoot a couple. The shot was nowhere close, but the foul is on Tay Davis, and that's four on him. Well, it showed the experience that KD has. He went to the basket knowing he was going to get hit, but he went ahead and went strong and tried to go score, and they, they ended up coming across and fouling him. KD goes to the line to shoot a couple, two of three at the line tonight, five of six on the young season. Chaney Johnson set to check in, and he does. Jalen Williams takes a seat, and back in for Notre Dame goes Marcus Burton, and Julian Roper also back into the lineup for the Irish. KD's second free throw, also good. That's the way he step up there and make two free throws. Shows his experience. Half a dozen points for Johnson. 72-49, Auburn by 23 again. Konezny had it knocked away into the hands of Roper to Booth. 15 to shoot. Still no dribble. Now he puts down a bounce, two bounces, and hands off to Roper. Roper working against Baker Mazzara. Spins right side of the lane. Picks up his dribble. Puts up a tough one-handed shot. Won't go. Konezny, the offensive board, and the putback, no, but a foul is called. And Konezny will go to the line to shoot two more free throws. He has been a terror on the glass. On the offensive glass, when you give other teams second opportunities, it creates negatives. We're going to take uh, the timeout here as well. 7.51 to go in the ballgame. Auburn leads Notre Dame 72 49. This is the Auburn Sports Network for PlayFly. Things we take for granted. Ordinary opportunities right, for parents Paul wants and their to do children can be a foster child's great. extraordinary. Paul, we can you come have back the power we'll to do something here. positive that will change the life of a young person I'm right here in Alabama. Open your heart and open Sounds your home good. to a foster child today. For more information, visit www.dhr.alabama.gov or call 1-866-64-AL-KIDS. Brought to you by the Alabama Department of Human Resources, the Alabama Broadcasters Association, and this station. Here's a clip from a recent Talking Tigers podcast with Andy Burcham. Ralph Jordan Jr. The name Jordan is spelled like Jordan, of course. You know, I never knew the origin of that pronunciation until I started doing the family genealogy stuff up in West Virginia, where my great my great grandfather was from. And the state archivist there in, in Charleston told me that it was a Welsh pronunciation that the Welsh did not want to be confused with the Irish, so they took the J-O-R-D-A-N and turned it into Jordan. Now, in the in the cemeteries and things around Salem and down I mean, around Benson Township, you will see it spelled G-E-R-D-E-N, J-E-R-D-E-N, J-O-R-D-A-N, but all of them pronounce it Jordan. A new episode of the Talking Tigers podcast is released every Monday. Wherever you listen to podcasts, like and subscribe. Stand by, Talking coming back Tigers with Paul. Podcast, only from the Auburn Sports Network. Paul Allen back in the Auburn studios, checking the Yellowwood scoreboard. Here in the second overtime in Mobile, Nichols came from 12 down to put it in overtime. It's 84 all with 48 seconds to go in overtime. Meanwhile, in the SEC, Missouri made it close at halftime, but Minnesota has owned the second half. 63-49, Minnesota leads Missouri with seven minutes to go. That's a Yellowwood update, Brad. All right, Paul, thank you very much. With Coach Randall Dickey, I'm Brad Law, Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Well, that practice facility was something else. It's a beautiful place. The Brooklyn Nets, uh, uh, it, it's hard to practice there because the view is so beautiful <laughs> of the Hudson. Well, they had to lower the, the shades there, and it wasn't just to block out the sunlight, I don't oh, think. It was it's, to it's a gorgeous keep you place. focus. Yeah, I think our players really enjoyed being exposed to that level and what the teams uh, in the NBA are exposed to and the facilities they get to play in. And this is a beautiful arena as yeah. well. You know, our dinner was pretty good last night. The teams wasn't bad either. They went to dinner at a, at a place right on the river with views of the city. 
terrific experiences, and then they've come in, they've taken care of business so far here today. Konezny knocks down the first of two free throws. Uh, it's one of the great cities in the world as far as culture and restaurants, diversity. There's just a lot of positives in this area. Konezny knocks down both free throws, 72-51. The Auburn lead is 21. A lot of traffic in this city. That's for sure. You know, the Lior Berman is into the game for Auburn. He bounces it into Janai. Offensive rebound for Lior in traffic. Out to Holloway. Drives left side. Scoops it up left hand. A little too short. And the rebound to Imes for Notre Dame. Auburn's outscoring Notre Dame 20-8 to in the paint in the second half. That was an advantage. One of the few advantages for the Irish in the first half. And Auburn is countered here in the second. Imes is short on the three. Janai Broom gathers the rebound for Auburn, his sixth. Six rebounds, four assists, and 12 points for Broom. Here's Holloway to Janai, top of the key, three. Why not? I think you can put any of the three combinations with those two guys. Aiden Holloway and Janai Broom really makes us a good team. 15 for Broom, the lead 24 for Auburn. Burton stop, pop, shoot, no, off the heel. Offensive rebound, Burton, nobody went to get it. Auburn boxed out, but they didn't chase the rebound. Konezny shot blocked by Broom. Oh, a late whistle and a foul, and Janai will be whistled for his fourth foul of the game. And with 6.45 to go, Konezny with two more free throws. I would have liked for that foul to be less than four minutes, but uh, <laughs> so the next two minutes is a little bit dicey. But Dylan has played well. He's played with good energy. He's played good defense, and he's rebounded the ball. Konezny got every bit of the rim, and it popped out. Shrewsbury back into the lineup for the Irish. Shrewsbury, Burton, Konezny, Zona, and Imes, the five on the floor for the guys in white. For Auburn, second free throw is good, by the way, for Konezny. Looks like we're going to go with a little bit smaller lineup with Jay, uh, Jalen Williams for uh, Broom. Yep. So it's Holloway, Moore, Williams, Jones, and Berman. Got to get the Bermanator in the scoring column tonight. Here's underneath, Williams spins on Zona. Left-hander, good. Jalen Williams can have that shot almost any time he wants it. And now he's in double figures, the yeah, fifth. As, as gorgeous spin move, good left hand. 77-52, a whistle away from the ball, a foul. And they'll get Lior. Lior in uh, some physicality with Zona the taller forward for Notre Dame. And it's the first on Lior. That's the 10th team foul, so two shots for Zona. He has not scored tonight. Big fellow with, that's, that's just the ninth foul, my mistake. No, that was, all right, yeah. Everybody crashed the boards like it was the front end of a one and one. He missed the shot. He kind of shocked everyone. <laughs> I thought it was 10. Yeah, he'll get a second free throw. I looked at the other opposite official on the other side of the court. I was thinking, well, if he didn't call it, we're just going to drive the ball down the floor. Zona makes the second free throw. He's now one of three from there this season. 6.21 on the clock here in the second half. Auburn by 24, 77-53. Williams goes to Denver Jones. Denver bounce pass Williams, 4-3, too long. Rebound, Chris Moore had it knocked out of his hands as he went up. And then an Auburn foul on the start in transition as Burton tried to come out of that pack. Denver Jones tried to reach in and, oh no, they got Berman again? All right, they got Lior again for his second. And so two free throws. When you make a trip and a half, you stop the clock twice. Yeah. They were gonna have to learn to get the ball back in Aiden's hands, allow him to run the, run the offense. First free throw good for Burton. He only has one field goal in the second half. He has 11 points, but Auburn has really done a nice job keeping him in check. He's four for 18 for the game as he, he makes both free throws. Yeah, he's gonna be an outstanding player. At, uh, he's, uh, I think that both guards They've actually switched him off defensively, off our point guards to preserve his legs just a little bit. Holloway 
Rocks the dribble. Hooks it over to the left wing. Jones for three. No good, too strong. Jalen with the offensive board. Holloway ahead, fake, he'll reset. 5.45 to go in the game. Holloway hunched over on the dribble, spins, goes to Williams at the top, back to Holloway. Bounce to Williams in the lane. Bounce past Jones underneath. Denver up with a right hand, too strong. That's mm. a good look. That was, that was a nice play and it was a beautiful pass by Jalen Williams. Thought Denver should have caught, went straight to the goal with that. Yeah. Kind took, of faded away. Took some time off the clock, 5.20 to play. Burton to the top in Shrewsbury against Jones. Shrewsbury has hit a couple of threes, goes to Konezny, he'll try a three, that's too strong. And the backside rebound to Auburn. Denver went up over Burton to get it, or got position on Burton and cleared the rebound. Here is Holloway. Five minutes to go in the game. Auburn 77, Notre Dame 55. Holloway all the way to the hoop with a right hand from the left side of the lane. He just blew by his defender and scored Aiden Holloway. He had amazing awareness on his drive off the ball screen. He had the angle on the big that took him but he just reached a little bit further out and laid it in. That was really nice. Burton tried to answer a little dipsy do. It wouldn't fall, and Berman clears his second oh, rebound of the game. Good aggressive rebound by Leor. Holloway, right at the top. Tom Tom's the ball, long range. To the left wing, Jones. His entry pass to Moore is just intercepted. Konezny stuck the right hand out there and picked it out of the air. Turnover Auburn, Notre Dame with the ball. Auburn leads by 24 as we approach the four minute mark. Konezny picks up his dribble. Goes to the foul line and Zona. Spins to face the basket, now spins again and goes to Konezny in the corner. He'll try a three. That is too long. Hit the rim twice, bounced off. That Chris was a Moore. good defensive series there. We established ourselves, we communicated and we retrieved the ball off the glass. Auburn, by the way, is out-rebounded. Notre Dame in this half, 19 to eight. That was a good adjustment at halftime. That pass is tipped in the air and then stolen. And Notre Dame wants to run. Right wing, Imes, head fake. Now he'll take the three on. Holloway missed it. Rebound, Williams. Another board for the Tigers. One and done for Notre Dame. I think Aiden's a little bit winded right now. Yeah. <laughs> The strategy was to not call a lot of timeouts and to keep the pace red hot. Yeah, you don't want that, when you're ahead, you don't want that clock to stop. No, here's Denver Jones. Pops a long jumper from straight away. Missed it long. I think everybody's a little winded right now. Yeah, we need that media timeout. It had been a dead <laughs> ball for a while. Burton, oh, a shot rejected by Williams. He blocked it into the front row. And that'll get us to the media timeout with 3.01 to play in the ball game, Auburn basketball brought to you by East Alabama Health. With more than 80 physicians added in the last five years, they are growing their health care team to meet the growing needs of Auburn, Opelika, and the surrounding area. Tigers by 24 with 3.01 to go. Back to Brooklyn in a moment. Uh, the Auburn basketball continues in a moment. Southern homes are particularly vulnerable to termites. In this climate, you need guaranteed protection. You need Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. Termites attack the Centricon stations, exposing themselves to an agent that eliminates their entire colony. Upgrade from old-fashioned liquid service to the proven protection of Centricon and Cook's Pest Control. Call Cook's today for a free evaluation. Don't you mean fa la 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 la? No, we're shaking things up. Whatever you say. Shake things up this season at the Toyota Thon sales event. Lease a new 2024 Toyota RAV4 LE for $3.39 a month for 24 months, plus $500 holiday bonus cash. Toyota, let's go places. Offer valid through December 5th, 2023. Well qualified last use with approved credit through Southeast Toyota Finance. 3638 do it signing. No security deposit with select equipment. 350 disposition fee. Excludes tax, tag, registration, title, and dealer fees. See dealer for details. The Whataburger Sweet and Spicy Bacon Burger is an all-time favorite. It brings so many flavors together in harmony, you might wonder if it's greater than the sum of its parts. It's got two all-beef patties, both of which fantastic. Crispy bacon, love that. Grilled onions, mmm. Melty cheese, I mean, who could say no? And sweet and spicy pepper sauce. Yes, please. I guess we're kind of partial to every part. The Sweet and Spicy Bacon Burger from Whataburger, just like you like it. Keep it.
visit here after the game for the Regions Bank Post Game Show with final stats and analysis, plus comments from Coach Burrow. Now, back to the game. Well, Auburn got out to a fast start. Notre Dame cut it to six at halftime. But then Auburn scored the first 11 points of the second half and have never looked back. The Tigers lead 79-55 with 3.01 to go. And, uh, and the Auburn fans that have made the trip here decided to make a long weekend out of it or just a little midweek vacation to the Big Apple. They are having a great time. Beautiful to see the orange in the, oh. in the stands and get through this next three minutes. We've uh, readjusted. We've got uh, a new lineup in, a lot of fresher legs. Notre Dame with a basketball, 2.50 to go. Clock runs, 11 on the shot clock. This is Booth to the top of the key, and Shrewsbury, who missed a three long, running rebound to KD in front court. Hesitates, drives, now pulls it back up, backs out on the perimeter, gives to Donaldson inside the jump circle. Trey runs it at the point. Two and a half minutes to go. Broom to the left wing. KD drives, bounces to Broom into the right corner. Baker Mazar for three. That is in and out. Rolled out, and uh, then Moore went up and over Konezny and knocked it out of bounds. So That was really a good look. I think as he goes along the season, he's going to learn and he's going to get that cross-court pass, and it's so important to prepare, prepare your body before the ball gets there when you're a shooter. All reserves in the game now for Notre Dame. Imes took the handoff from Booth with 2.10 to go. The ball is knocked out of bounds, last touched by Auburn, and Notre Dame will keep it. Alex Wade and Raheem Bratton, a couple of guys who have not played yet this year, are in for Notre Dame. Wade out of San Diego, Bratton from South Bend, one of a couple of South Bend natives on the Notre Dame team. Two minutes to go, seven on the shot clock. The drive by Imes into the corner looking for Bratton. It's knocked out of bounds by Auburn. Irish keep it with five to shoot. Yeah, smart defensive play by Janai. You know, he's got four fouls. He played off of him, played him as a driver, gave him room, but did not foul him. Really impressive second half effort by the Tigers. Here's a long lob. It's intercepted by Chad Baker Mazzara. Ahead to KD. He muscles it up, gets fouled, missed the shot. KD winds up on his stomach on the floor, and he will go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. And Brayton picks up the foul. He ran into the Tasmanian Devil. KD attacked that basket with a vengeance, didn't he? <laughs> Does he ever do anything but that? KD is 4-5 at the foul line tonight. He has six points. Now I'll give him seven. Cardwell in, Janai Broom checks out, perhaps for the final time tonight. Oh yeah, he had 15 and six on seven of 11 shooting. Yeah, four assists to go with it, coach. And I tell you, it's, uh, he and Aiden Holloway are one, two powerful punch. Yeah. KD good on both free throws, 81-55. Tigers hit that 80 point mark. You thought if, uh, if the game got 280 points, it was going to be highly in Auburn's favor because of the style of play. Our depth just makes so much difference. Mm -hmm. There's a jumper rimmed out. Tapped up and in, though, underneath by Konezny. He's having a career-type game. They are Konezny with 15 points. And that's one thing I think we'll have to be real patient with this team because we play so many players. There's times in segments throughout the game that we're not going to play very well. Baker Mazzara just a pull-up jumper, a little 10-footer from the left side. It's good. Baker Mazzara now 83-57 Auburn. And the Tigers are shooting 54% for the game. And we're going to see some of the reserves for the Tigers in the final minute. 55 seconds. Imes backs up on the dribble. Kicks into the corner for Brayton. Drives, hands off, Konezny. Layup is good. Good finish. 17 for Konezny, and now there's a whistle. And a uh, quick change timeout here for the Tigers as we see some of the walk-ons, some of the reserves. Jalen Harper is in. Carter Sabera is in. 
Blake Mischalik is in. Oh, what a, what a historic Aaron, moment. They're going to yeah. get a chance to play in New York City and Barclays Center. And Aaron Scott is in the lineup for the Tigers. Mischalik drives, hands to Berman in the corner. Lior, jump stop, kicks to Harper. To the top in Sabera. He drives, spins, looks. Who's open? At the top, Mischalik, 10 to shoot. 25 seconds to go in the game. Mischalik drives, puts it up off the glass, left it a little bit short. Booth the rebound for Notre Dame. And uh, the coaches say, back off, don't foul. We'll see what Notre Dame wants to do with the final 12 seconds. Looks like the Irish are going to hold the ball. Maybe not. Booth takes a long three with four. It's no good. Rebound to Berman. And that will do it. Auburn leads big early. Notre Dame made a run at the half, but the Tigers pulled away. An impressive second half performance from Auburn, and the Tigers knock off Notre Dame 83 to 59. Auburn will meet St. Bonaventure tomorrow at 6 Central. We'll have pregame coverage starting at 5.30 Central tomorrow afternoon for Auburn and St. Bonaventure as the Tigers try to win their second game of the Legends Classic. Boy, just what can you say, Coach, about this team and how they came out in the second half? I think the coaches will be pleased with the way the guys performed tonight because they put two halves together. There were certain segments that were better than others, but throughout when you look at it as a, you know, a complete uh, whole game, I think the, the, they'll be very pleased by adding that, and that's a, that was one of the emphasis coming into the game is trying to be able to get to the play 40 minutes. We've got a lot more coming up on the uh, Regions Bank post-game show. We'll interview Coach Pearl, a player or two as well, give you the final stats and set the stage for tomorrow's meeting with St. Bonaventure. Once again, your final score, Auburn 83, Notre Dame 59. The Regions Bank post-game show is next. This is the Auburn Sports Network from PlayFly. A limited number of men's basketball single game tickets are still available. Don't miss the exhilarating action at Neville Arena as Bruce Pearl and the Tigers play in the most electric atmosphere in college basketball. Fill the jungle.